Okay, so the story of Shea Linland goes back. Our first acquisition was two years ago, a little over two years ago. And we bought a stamping and fabricating company in Chicago out of foreclosure. Uh, it was a small acquisition, just a good way to start. Uh, a, a troubled company financially with a great customer base. So we paid a small amount of money. Uh, we acquired that company with nine million of annual revenue. Uh, today, two years later, its revenues are 35 million per year. So we feel pretty good. It's a profitable company. But that was the start of the company. And uh, you always think fondly of you know, how you get started. We bought Main Steel about a year and a half ago. Uh, it was a toll processor in the stainless and aluminum business, processing roughly a billion pounds a year pre-recession uh, pre of stainless and aluminum. Uh, for 57 years, they were a toll processing company, and we changed the business model there uh, to service center. Uh, that was a little controversial at the time. Uh, because we went direct to the customer. Um, everybody wondered what exactly would happen. It's been a pretty good story. Our revenues in the last year and a half have increased 300%. So we feel pretty good about the strategic uh, rationale. We basically saved the company because it was struggling in the recession, like so many of, of the steel industry companies in the United States. Um, and, and so that was the foundation of the service center component of our company. Um, the third acquisition was completed about uh, three months ago now. We bought the IPVF pipe valve and fitting company from the Home Depot Supply Company. Um, we paid uh, roughly $500 million for the acquisition. Uh, we, we bought a terrific company with a great management team uh, and roughly, uh, roughly 6,000 customers. So we went after a, a great customer base and a great management team in the energy industry. And, and that has already turned uh, to be very successful for us coming out of the blocks. Um, our revenues are increasing dramatically. Shale Inland's revenues in this last two years, it seems, it seems like a short period of time, but our revenues are right at about a billion dollars uh, per year. Uh, we, we purchase uh, uh, you know, stainless steel and, and other steels from all over the world. Uh, we have customers on four continents, and uh, uh, the outlook lo looks pretty good for us. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, the, the project history, we, we started in, uh, in 2003, the steel industry in North America recognized uh, that going forward, in order to make the same type of energy efficiency reductions we'd done in the past 20 years, uh, which at that point was on the order of 25, 28 percent, in order to get that going forward, new processes would be necessary. So we started uh, with 11 different technologies under evaluation and then we went down to four and then we went down to two. So if you fast forward to 2007, uh, we had two projects that we were investigating, uh, one of which is the project that was the subject of, of this award. Uh, it's with our partners at the University of Utah under the direction of Professor Rocky Sohn. It's an iron making technology. Uh, which takes advantage of the plentiful iron ore finds that are here. And it's an adaptation of technology from copper smelting that we felt uh, would have good application in iron making in the steel industry. So since 2003, up until when we submitted our project proposal to DOE in the end of 2011, we have continued to develop the technology mm -hmm from laboratory, different sizes of laboratory scales as we, as, uh, and it continued to pass all of the technical hurdles that allowed us to continue to invest in it up to this point where we are ready for uh, pilot scale work with the Department of Energy. Well, as I, as I mentioned during my speech, let's say, uh, in general, um, there was a time where, when uh, some DR plants were installed in North America. But uh, there was then a ballet in the first in the steel making industry at the end of the 90s, beginning of, the, of this uh, century. And um, of course, uh, additional to that, it was a high increase in natural gas prices and energy in general. That's why most of the plants, uh, of the air plants in North America, were shut down, uh, dismantled, and relocated uh, in other parts of the world. Uh, meanwhile, we have developed some innovations in our technology, making the scheme more efficient in terms of energy. Uh, it has reached the lowest uh, energy consumption ever. 
very close to the theoretical one, in fact. Now, because of the shale gas phenomena, there is uh, extraordinary opportunity uh, for the installation of the plants in North America in order to uh, replace uh, high prices scrap at the moment, of course, mm -hmm. and the possibility also to shift uh, from the coal-based iron making to the DR plants based on natural gas. Uh, in general, uh, let's say shale gas is available worldwide uh, in terms of uh, uh, potential reserves. Uh, China is the number one. Uh, second is uh, United States, uh, Argentina, Europe. Uh, in general, I would say that uh, between China and Europe are more than double than the United States. But, uh, if, okay, first for fracking, technology required. North America has the technology. And secondly, there are some other issues related to the underground and the availability of water. In China, for instance, there is a problem of uh, water scarcity in the areas where the shale gas is located. That is a, is a restriction. Uh, North America, on the opposite, is now has become the uh, king in natural gas availability. And in terms of, uh, of DR possibilities, let's say in general, uh, if we fix the cost of iron ore, the impact of uh, natural gas in the operating costs for DRI production uh, accounts for about 10 to 30 percent, depending on the prices. So, uh, that uh, if the price is 10 million BTUs, as used to be some years or months ago, <laughs> uh, then the impact is, is really uh, high, 30 percent of the total production cost. But nowadays, at two, three dollars, per million BTUs, the impact is only less than 10 percent. So it's a really a enormous uh, benefit in terms of, IR, of uh, the area production. Um, um, typ typically, the, the, the larger players will, will buy in multi-year contracts, and, and that's typically anywhere from, from three to five years. Um, the smaller players, it's most typically done on, on an annual PO type basis. Um, so we're, we're, we're as a company flexible to either, but, but the, especially the, 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 the steel industry does remember back that time in 2008 when lime was very tight and they want to ensure they've got a security of, of supply. So, so common for the big guys to go three so to five years. Do you have prices?